Hello and welcome. From our introduction to reasoning, we explored the notion that we are born ready to reason, but we may not always be reasonable. We need some time to get good at it, but it's within all of us. You could say it's in our genes. Our ancestors' early observations often led them to the wrong conclusions, the earth being flat and at the center of the universe, for example. But with time, we get better at separating fact from fiction. We even suggested that our success as a species is linked to our ability to reason, as it has given us a survival advantage. Like observing the behavior of striking rocks together. That survival advantage may have given us a little too much influence over the future of the planet. Reasonable decisions about its care are paramount. In this episode, we'll look more specifically at how our observations of patterns or trends are linked to reasoning. Patterns can be found everywhere. For example, we have patterns in economics, the environment, history, climate, behavior, etc. Consider the opportunity our ancestors uncovered by observing the pattern of plants dropping seeds that became new plants. It seems so obvious now, but it wasn't until about 10,000 years ago that humans connected the dots. Instead of wandering the planet hoping to find food, our ancestors started to plant seeds and care for the plants. One of the first major steps in observing nature and then influencing its direction. When we use patterns or trends to help us make conclusions, we are using inductive reasoning. Conclusions we make using inductive reasoning are called conjectures. With inductive reasoning, our conjecture is really an educated guess that may or may not be true. The clarity with which we observe the patterns can be influenced by what we are shown and by previous experiences or knowledge or the desire to see what we already believe to be true. In a courtroom, the term conjecture is used to object to counsel's attempt to put pieces of the case together that haven't been agreed to as factual, a bit like conjuring up a story. Let's consider some examples to put this together, starting with our seed connection. Our observation of a pattern might be new plants have been observed growing from seeds. And our conjecture could be seeds contain tiny plants that will grow into new ones. Our conjectures often form the basis for us to present an argument. These observations show this pattern, so I have good reason for my conclusion. Another outcome of our conjectures is that they give us predictive capabilities. For example, if we plant a seed, it will grow into a new plant. This is one of the reasons we spend time studying history. Past patterns help us get a glimpse into the future. Our ancestors' plant seed conjecture was accurate enough to advance human success with the dawn of the agricultural revolution and the beginning of civilizations. Here's a more modern example. The last three times I searched for a product using Google, ads for those products appeared in unrelated searches. Our conjecture might be, Google is tracking my searches and targeting ads related to my viewing behavior. We are forming conjectures all the time, even if we don't realize it. With such a variety of patterns to observe, some are easier than others to form conjectures about. What conjecture will we come up with for this pattern? The last five days, I've observed the movement of the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. Our conjecture would be something like, the sun always moves from the east to the west. And we could make the prediction, tomorrow the sun will rise in the east and set in the west. We could make a scale to visualize the relative strength of our conjectures. A kind of how sound is your argument scale. 
The fact that the sun's apparent movement is actually the result of the Earth's accepted rotation implies this pattern will continue. So it is a strong conjecture. Here's a simple sequence that forms a pattern. What conjecture can we make? Each new number is two greater than the last. Or we could suggest it's a list of odd numbers starting at one. And our prediction would be the next number will be nine as it's two greater than seven. How strong is this conjecture? We could suggest it's relatively strong as the pattern is pretty clear. Or would our conjecture strengthen if the pattern were extended to include 9, 11, and 13? Certainly. The more samples or data that supports the conjecture, the stronger the argument we can make that the conjecture is true. Sometimes the patterns are less obvious or certain. Pause the video and see if you can make a conjecture about this pattern and predict the next value. With some careful observation, we see that each number is increasing by a multiple of 3. Add 3 times 1, then 3 times 2, 3 times 3. So our conjecture is that each number is the sum of the last number plus the next multiple of 3. Our prediction, therefore, is that the next number will be the sum of 13 plus 3 times 4, which is 13 plus 12 equals 25. Again, this pattern seems to be fairly clear, so our conjecture is relatively strong. What do you think about the certainty of this pattern? The baby stopped crying the last three times she was rocked gently. Rocking the baby gently stops her from crying. So we might think we've got this figured out, and that the next time she cries, all we need to do is rock her gently. If you've had any time caring for a baby, You'll know they're very unpredictable, so this conjecture would be weak. It would be great if being a parent were that easy. Our modern day conjectures may not be quite as life and death as they would have been for our ancestors. A misconclusion about something poisonous, or how a woolly mammoth would respond during a hunt, are different from the reasoning needs we face. But we still need to be good at reasoning because our complex world has complex patterns that we need to decipher. As we continually solve problems, we unwittingly add new ones. For example, the automobile's arrival was celebrated as a solution to the pollution problem caused by so many horses. This pattern of progress is only accelerating, making our ability to spot and evaluate these trends as critical as ever. Our concerns are heightened when we see people in really important roles demonstrating some very questionable patterns of behavior and may make a conjecture like intelligence is not always a prerequisite to being a leader. Studying patterns and trends and forming conjectures are often how it all starts, but they are works in progress that may or may not hold up over time. We will consider a wide range of inductive reasoning examples in our next episodes so that you can see how this type of reasoning plays such an important role in our lives.